Well, people were really vehement about not removing the dam, particularly the neighbors in the hill just up this way that overlooks the park. They felt that they were going to be losing an asset to their neighborhood. They were concerned that it was just going to be a mud hole, that there would be mosquitoes, that there would be whatever that was unattractive here. People at first were very, very skeptical of uh, what was going to happen. But of course now, uh, people know very well what's happened and, and the whole city is enjoying it. Since the 1700s, people have built dams to provide power for our growing nation. We relied on these dams for everything from irrigating our fields, to powering our lumber and grain mills, to manufacturing our clothing. Today, most of the mills are gone, but the dams remain. There are thousands of obsolete dams, or dams that simply cause more harm than good. These dams block our waterways, putting a financial burden on the owners and harming the health of our rivers. Many communities are learning that maintaining a questionable dam is not in their best interest, that removing a dam and gaining a healthy, free-flowing river is actually a key asset for their future. Back in the late 50s, early 60s, I think it was commonplace when businesses didn't know what to do with the dam or wanted to give it up. They went to the local community and said, geez, we're going to give you this wonderful dam and to make it legal, we'll charge you a dollar for it, give us the dollar, and now the dam is your responsibility. 1981, uh, we received a notice from the Department of Natural Resources that we had several problems. The average lifespan of a dam is about 50 years and only regular maintenance and expensive repair can extend a dam's life. Many dams have gone neglected, and by the year 2020, the vast majority of our dams will be older than 50 years. This is a problem many communities can no longer afford to ignore. So what can we do when we're faced with an unsafe or obsolete dam, or one that simply causes more harm than good? Typically, there are three options. Change how the dam is operated, repair it, or remove it. Well, as I recall, we were concerned about uh, that probably was nothing but mud and muck underneath, and it was not going to be something that would ever be able to be used, and it would end up being a real eyesore. Uh, they were also concerned as to who was going to take care of it and how it was going to be taken care of. So I think a lot of people were concerned about what would happen with and what the looks would be once all of a sudden we saw a mud flat piece of land uh, right in the middle of our city. I think the most important thing is to have an alternative for people to look at. What will the area be like without the dam? Will it be an asset to the community? Will it be an asset to my property if I'm a neighborhood? You've got to have that alternative vision. Together, the city and the community developed a plan for how the new land would be restored. This process helped people envision what the area would look like once the dam was removed. One thing, though, I, I need to say, though, as well, is in this conservative community, cost was a significant issue. To replace the dam with a combined dam and bridge would have been $3.3 .3 million. And you look at $86,000 to take out the dam, plus some work to develop a park, another $200,000 to get it seated, and then continuing investments in park facilities that people could enjoy. Which are you going to get more for your money from? And when they began to weigh that, the dam and bridge combination versus no dam in a park, it became clear that the balance was in favor of putting the money in a park. Dam removal can be the logical choice for budget-conscious communities. Often repairs are more than three times as expensive as the one-time cost of removing a dam. And replacing the dam is usually even more expensive. So we saved a million eight hundred thousand dollars by not replacing the dam and we gained all of the land that was in the impoundment area which was well over 67 acres of land that is now usable that wasn't usable before. The area that was underwater 
uh, when the dam was in yet was extended all the way around onto this side here, that walkway there, all the way west. While residents today can enjoy a healthy, free-flowing Milwaukee River, one that includes fishing, recreation, and clean water, when the dam was in place, it was a different story. Down where the dam used to be, it was nothing but a just a big cesspool. People had tires in there and refrigerators and just, it was really nasty and it smelled horribly. It was bad news. Not until the dam was removed did everyone realize that they had turned bad news and a liability into good news and an asset for the whole community. They did a wonderful job. I mean, it really made something out of nothing almost, <laughs> out of garbage. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And all the prairie flowers that are coming up and um, all the rabbits that are hopping along <laughs> on the trails. What more would you want to see in nature? It is absolutely amazing to me that we could be so blind to this wonderful asset for so many years, and I was part of it. And it, you know, you don't really realize what a wonderful thing having a river flowing through your town is. So now you say to me, what is getting rid of the dam and letting letting the water go through and, and uh, improving the park this way? It's it's generally it's a lot more useful, it's a lot more usable to, to people. There's, with the trails, is real nice and stuff, and obviously my boys love the bridges. So the whole attitude has changed and now people want to be down not only setting along the river, walking along the river, but they also want to even be experiencing and touching the river. And so it really is a nice benefit for the public to have. Dams interrupt the natural balanced flow of sediment. This can cause entire watersheds down to the coastal areas to be sediment starved. Restoring streams like Cold Creek helps distribute sediment naturally throughout the whole watershed. Through numerous public hearings and site walks, citizens were able to get the facts and have their concerns addressed. Usually, dam removal does not require extensive engineering. Nature will take care of itself. Instead of piping sediment out to the lake, we're putting water back on the land, we're rewatering the meadow, we're growing vegetation, we're depositing sediment where it belongs on the land, not in the water. We're restoring fisheries, we're restoring wildlife habitat like waterfowl habitat. They, they, I think it's 75 percent of the wetlands and 50 percent of the meadows in urban areas around the Tile Basin have been destroyed or altered and so a project like this is a very significant step in bringing back some of that lost habitat. I'm kind of embarrassed that I was ever opposed to stream restoration, um, but it took an educational process. You know, you really have to think about what you're going to hand down to your children. Restoring something to its natural beauty, I think, is something that people will never regret. Uh, we're pounding in willow sticks, and they'll sprout out, and they'll grow to be full-size willow bushes. And then it gives a protection to the, the fish that will eventually be in here. And really, it just, it doesn't take that much time. And it, 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 for the time it takes, it helps so much more. In 1837, the Edwards Dam was built to provide mechanical power and later electrical power for sawmills, a grist mill, and a textile mill. The dam helped fuel the Industrial Revolution. Over time, the mills closed and other power sources were built. And in July 1999, the Edwards Dam was removed in order to bring back the historic fish populations that long ago inhabited the river in record numbers. After 12 years of debate, change is happening quickly on the Kennebec River. It's, a, it's amazing how fast the rivers are covering. Yeah grass and trees are growing on the banks and it's already looking more natural than it did. The positive changes are taking people by surprise, even turning ardent opponents into supporters. And I think if you give everything a chance, nature will straighten itself out, but you've got to give it a chance. We finally concluded that the best result was to remove the dam. Given the fact that there was very little electricity being generated, that it really made more sense to do it the right way and to just remove the dam. Yeah. yeah, more people can use it for, you know, a wider variety of things now and I certainly don't miss it, you know. I'm sure it had its 
purpose, but we're happy without it. <laughs> Initially, the city was opposed. Uh, the dam represented uh, uh, the economic lifeblood of the city for a hundred years. Within a very short time, people in Maine began to see that restoring free-flowing rivers by removing a dam also brings new options for economic revitalization. As in West Bend and other communities, the restored Kennebec River is a new economic force. I think the dam removal was the catalyst for the enhanced city-state relationship which led to some new monies coming in, which led to some new business interests. I think it's all intricately connected. Dams can provide important services, but these services come at a cost. Many other communities have learned that despite their initial fears, dam removal can be affordable. It increases their quality of life, benefits the environment, and expands their economic opportunities. They found that taking a second look at their dams is an important part of planning their future.